Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and I want to just talk today about our favorite 2021-2022 school year, school year reads. We are a, a Charlotte Mason homeschooling family so we use a lot of literature and memoir and biography, historical fiction, different things like that as part of our reading and learning. And so I thought it'd be fun to have a record of it and also just share in case these books would interest um, somebody else. So I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to kind of go my youngest child to my oldest child and myself and just share. I didn't include any of our group reads this year. I mean, if the child would have picked that as their favorite, maybe I would have included it. But these ended up being all individual reads. I guess there is two. I guess mine are all of us. But so anyway, I just want to share. So for my three-year-old, we had just a lovely time reading picture books and playing outside and just enjoying life. I read him a few of the Beatrix Potter stories, which I want to continue because I have the whole collection. Um, of course, he can't tell me right off the bat what his favorite book is. I think as far as just the long uh, reading experience together, um, my favorite was um, the Jesus Storybook Bible with him. And I read this, I've read this numerous times to uh, multiple of my children, and it is just a lovely uh, narrative kind of following um, the biblical story. Uh, what I love about it is, of course, the illustrations, the beautiful lyrical language, and just the idea that um, there's a thread of love presented throughout the Bible. I really enjoy that. Um, this author is Sally Lloyd-Jones, jo and I really enjoy that perspective that everything kind of had a thread of love behind it. And so I really enjoyed this experience reading this with my three-year-old, um, and we had so much fun. He really enjoys reading aloud. Um, I guess I'll put these here. So, and then I asked my, uh, he is now eight-year-old, what his favorite read, and he enjoyed this book, Animals um, Marco Polo Saw, and this is An Adventure on the Silk Road by Sandru Sandra Marco. And this is just a really fun, slowly going through uh, Marco's trips and travels. And so it says a little bit about Marco's story, but then it always includes a little fact or a little interesting thing about one of the animals that you may have saw, seen on his travels. So that was really fun. Um, my now 10-year-old, um, her two favorite books were um, Our Island Story, and I'll try to put a picture up here, um, by H.E. Marshall. This book has been just a favorite in our family. There is, I'll try to link below, there is a free audio on LibriVox by a fantastic reader. Um, and so it's just a free resource because this is an older book, so it's in the public domain. And this kind of follows the origins and the history of um, Great Britain and um, all, you know, Scotland, everything, so the UK. And it is just really told in a narrative style. The chapters are kind of long, so sometimes we had to break them up. But she really enjoyed it. She's been, she has a little bit to finish up and she's been narrating it. So this is like my fifth um, time going through that book and I have just so enjoyed it. There is another book called This Country of Ours by the same author that follows um, an American history which is very interesting but that one isn't my, we all prefer the Our Island Story. So if you see that on book list there is a reason it is on book list because it's just a fantastic book. And her second one, she had two, was her and I enjoyed The Secret Garden together. And we had gotten this beautiful copy, and also I had gotten my other daughter, Heidi, and it was like a $5 sale from Barnes & Noble online, and it was just, they had a lot of different ones. Um, I'm not sure what the, it just says Barnes & Noble. It doesn't really give, like, <clears throat> the a title of this publishing series, you know, but just such a lovely copy. We so enjoyed it. I have read this a few times and I just came to really love Dickens' mother, um, Mrs. Sowerby, I think. Or that, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I just really enjoyed that. I did find myself, and I didn't say this to my daughter, but I did find myself 
not liking Colin as much as I remember. Like, just his progression, I mean, was really great, and it was encouraging and inspiring. But for some reason, he came across really frustrating to me. I definitely, definitely... Mary was funny to me, and just I love her growth and her coming to accept accept herself and grow because she had such a rough childhood. Um, but I really love Martha and Dickon and Mrs. Sowerby my, are my favorite. And then my now, uh, she's now 13 year old, had two books she really loved. And the first was The Yearling um, by uh, Marjorie Kinman Rawlings. And she just said this one was just really interesting, the, the, the dynamics. She actually said that it just was kind of adventure and some different things in here, the characters. But she said she was really um, just interested in learning about racism through this book. And um, I know this is a famous Southern writer. Um, and so that was interesting to me because I've, I tried to read a memoir of Rawlings and I found it a little disturbing some of the racist themes in it and I don't know if I can't pinpoint exactly why I didn't connect in a way like to learn from it and be like ah oh, you know this is what I don't want to be you know but for some reason it rubbed me the wrong way it was kind of salt in a wound um, but my daughter said this was just beautiful it was sad it was kind of haunting and she just really loved this. She read it pretty quickly. Um, and so, and she narrated through it and she really found some interesting things in it. Her second favorite, which I had assigned to her and then she read it in like two days. So it was assigned for a whole, you know, time period and she just gobbled it up. And that is The Bronze Bow by Elizabeth George Spear. This is um, a historical fiction set during biblical times, um, this features Jesus and the disciples. It features, if I remember, because I read this a long time ago, um, it has to do with the Jewish zealots and different political uprisings and thing. And then on the side, quietly, you have this man, uh, Jesus, coming into the scene. And all of the, up, all of the turmoil and just some of the stuff that was... Uh, happening at that time and it is just a beautiful interesting um, lovely book and I was so glad that she loved it she ended up only narrating a little bit of it because she read it so fast and so we just went on to something else but I just she gobbled this up and she really loved it so and then my 15 year old I asked him and he for our co-op our group community group that we get together with some other families um, we had done David Copperfield and he mentioned that as an honorable mention but he also really loved Jack O'Brien's The Silver, uh, Silver Chief Dog of the North and so this is about a half dog half wolf and it's just full of adventure and danger and intrigue and he really loved this it has a lot of nature writing in it and so he found this fascinating and really enjoyed it um, so, yeah. And then I asked my 17-year-old what his favorite was, and he said definitely for him, David Copperfield, which was the community read, was one of his favorites. He just loved the characters and just learned. He said he learned a lot from just the different things they were going through, the troubles, and so that was neat. But he also said, you know, Mom, I really, really loved Pride and Prejudice. He said it was so funny you know and kind of snarky and he found it just fascinating and he really enjoyed just the kind of the snark and he's seen the movie of course and because he has sisters and a mom that loves Jane Austen and I thought you know it'd be good for him to read one of Austen's uh, books part of his high school and he really enjoyed this he says it's right up there with David Copperfield so that was cool and then last but not least, my favorites for the year were the one, were two that I um, enjoyed with others. So um, we had, I had read personally, I had read um, one of this man's books, Dallas Lore Sharp. It was called Lay of the Land. A friend had borrowed it to me. And he's a memoirist, that, a, na a nature memoirist. 
And he's also, I, I don't think he's a minister, but he might be a mister, minister, I can't remember. So this just gorgeously entwines his faith and nature and his family life with his, I think he has four boys, and just his, he's so astute. His, min, he's just the minutia of the natural world, but in almost, he's almost like a poet. And, but he's not hard to read, which sometimes when you have those combinations, it can be a little hard to read, but he is so readable. And so reading out loud to my kids this, we started it in the fall, but we took the whole year to read it because I didn't want to rush through it. And it's just so lovely. And at the end, he gives some ideas of things you can be looking for in the fall, which was really neat. And when I had read The Lay of the Land, I was just sold on this gentleman. And I know he has, you know, he has winter and spring and summer books, and he has other books. And so I really hope to dive into his other books. And so it was just so lovely. And there was, I don't know who the illustrations are by, if they're by him, but there was lovely illustrations too. Um, and I highly, highly recommend Mr. Sharp. So, and then my... My second favorite was, this was actually one of my favorite books of 2020 when, when the world kind of fell apart, which was a good shaking, right? Um, but um, this book and the Bible basically got me through 2020. And this is some of Mr. Barry, Wendell Barry's agrarian poetry. Um, I feel like this is a pretty accessible um, collection of poems. His poetry, to be honest, for, my, for me, sometimes I'm not quite sure what he's saying or what he's getting at, but the more I read him, I just find this beautiful um, idea and mental picture of the circle of life and, and relationships, how everything is connected. And I really appreciate his thoughts and his lovely sentiments. And so uh, we did the, we, we, uh, took a look at Mr. Barry in our Charlotte Mason co-op for poetry this year. So we looked at a few of his poems together. Um, the title, the uh, title of this book was one of the poems. And so, yeah, and we recently were working on, the last one we worked on was uh, How to Be a Poet. And so I don't know if I've read this on here, but I'm just going to close out by reading this because I just love it. How to be a poet, to remind myself. Make a place to sit down, sit down, be quiet. You must depend upon affection, reading, knowledge, skill, more of each than you have. Inspiration, work, growing older, patience, for patience joins time to eternity. Any readers who like your work, doubt their judgment. Breathe with unconditional breath, the unconditioned air. Shun electric wire. Communicate slowly. Live a three-dimensional life. Three-dimensioned life. Stay away from screens. Stay away from anything that obscures the place that is in. There are no unsacred places. There are only sacred places and desecrated places. Accept what comes from the silence. Make the best you can of it. Of the little words that come out of the si silence, like prayers, pray back to the one who prays. Make a poem that does not disturb the silence from which it came. That's by Wendell Berry. And so we had a wonderful year. I'm starting to pray and think about the next year. Um, but these were just a little slice of what we enjoyed. And hopefully, you know, uh, we've grown and we have moral courage and just grace to see others in a new way, in a kinder, compassionate way, um, and just love God and uh, people and the world in a new, strong way. And so I just wanted to share that. I thought it'd be fun for me to be able to re just have a record of what we did, and hopefully I can do it again next year. So thanks for listening, guys. And please talk below about any of these books, or if you enjoyed any of these authors and I would love to chat. Bye.